All right, so JAC, it's been it's been a hot second since we've played this archetype. Um, there is a group of folks that have a Discord server that took up championing this archetype um, after various people have played with it, including myself. And I asked uh, Hippity, is one of our subs, when someone added the secure and said, hey, what's the latest list your group's been working on? I want to kick around whatever your new technology is. So a couple of things here worth noting. We've got Banishing Knack and Retraction Helix, which are both the same card, but with different names. The different name distinction is important because it helps you get around Meddling Mage, which alongside an Engineered Explosives, actually lets you go infinite lets you uh bounce bounce stuff and like make your things infinite loot through your deck you got a couple of copies of faithless looting which is a card i've been off and on in the past i've been a little bit medium on it but the important thing that this list is doing that the list in the past i had worked doing is that i've never played faithless looting alongside verdant eidolon verdant eidolon is a way for us to recover card disadvantage so it could be that alongside verdant eidolon faithless looting becomes much more worthwhile it also makes it more difficult to brick off mid combo especially with verdant eidolon we have plenty of cards going faithless looting also makes sideboarding much easier because previously you had to struggle a little bit to figure out like which cantrips exactly you wanted to cut in previous iterations of this archetype whereas in this build you're just like okay i'm just gonna go ahead and faithless loot or cut the faithless looting because people often board in graveyard hate against you so you want to trim things like this that lean into the graveyard yeah there is there's one grove of the burn willows in here there's a grove and a horizon canopy which are interesting this build has also cut the noble hierarchs that i've played for a while and they're playing a dryad arbor as an 18th land and I think if you're going to play Dryad Arbor in this archetype, that's the right way to do it. Your your Dryad Arbor should be a... Um, should be a... Uh, a spell slot, not a... Not a what's it called slot, a, uh, a land slot. Don't don't cut land for Dryad Arbor, but if you want to cut like Noble Hierarch for Dryad Arbor, it seems reasonable. We have both failures to comply on the sideboard too, which is interesting. Kind of a neat silence S card that you can glittering wish for. If you've never seen JAC in general, there's probably people out there that have never seen this archetype in general. How this deck actually wins the game is you get a mana creature into play with Jeskai Ascendancy, and then you play all these non-creature spells which untap your mana creature, and it just gets bigger, and eventually you just kill them by attacking with your mana creature. So your your Birds of Paradise gets real swollen and attacks really full. So this hand is lacking a mana creature, but it has what I refer to as a slow ascendancy in it. So our combo is basically have mana creature in play, get ascendancy in play, start casting cantrips to loot through your deck and make your mana creature bigger. So you're just looking for lands, mana creature, and a way to get ascendancy into play. This hand's got a land and a bunch of cantrips that that land can cast, so it seems, seems like a reasonable keep. These are, these are harder matchups for us. They're not unwinnable, but the discard-based mid-range decks tend to give us a little bit of a struggle. JAC stands for Jeskai Ascendancy Combo. They took Faithless Looting. Uh, okay. I mean, I guess all of our cards just kind of turn into more cards, so it's like, whatever. Seems like an interesting one to take, though. I guess it depends on, like, what the rest of their hand looks like. I wonder about the mana base in this deck a little bit. So there's 18 lands in it, which is, I think, one more than I usually play. But there's also a pretty good deal of lands that don't make blue mana. Like, how many, how many of our 18 lands don't make blue mana? We have one two three four we have five lands that don't make blue mana in this deck so there's only 13 blue sources that kind of surprises me like there's a lot of i feel like this archetype keeps a lot of hands which are just like land or cantrip plus land that cast the cantrip wow that charmer going is hideous
Machete Mabel, thanks for the brand new Prime support. There's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch. Thanks for supporting mine this month with that. Is there is there only one fetchable blue source off of the windswept teeth? Man, I don't I don't know if I buy what this mana base is selling. I don't I don't know if I'm on board with this mana base. I'm gonna go top top here. Yeah, I don't think I've ever played a build without a hollowed fountain in it before. And stomping ground felt really clunky to me in the past. I haven't played with faithless looting, so like needing more red mana for faithless looting makes sense to me too, though. Brutal. So I kept glittering wish on top of my deck, right? Man, what did I just put on top of my deck? It was Glittering Wish plus Manamorphos, right? I think I'm actually going to bin the Glittering Wish here. Because I left a Glittering Wish on top of my deck. Yeah, I'm trying to... I'm trying to think. I need to, like, look at my... I need to look at my deck list for reference to, like, compare what the mana base is. Yeah, so my my mana base has a my mana base plays 16 lands, which is actually two less than this one, and it involves a hollowed fountain and a steam vents. Uh, this is match one, game one. I'm gonna Manamorphose for green white here, I think. Try and find my land, maybe. I'll go get JAC. And then, like, I have to just hope they don't, like, have. I just need to hope they have, like, a bunch of nothing in their hand, like, just a bunch of removal spells. I, I need to hope they have a bunch of removal spells that don't kill Ascendancy. Because, like, if they have Abrupt Decays and Assassin's Trophies, I'm also dead. But, like, I'm dead to Bolt, I'm dead to Coligan's Command, because I can't block. Because, like, I need the Sylvan Carry added to combo next turn. Oh, jeez, I can't... Oh, I have Faithless. I was going to say, I, I actually can't cast this and leave Blue Man up to play these. So, I'm going to go to two when this attacks me. Bloodbraid. Bloodbraid elf means I'm dead. Yeah, dead to, dead to Bloodbraid. Like I can I can block and not be dead this turn, but I can't do anything next turn. So Leyline of Sanctity comes in, engineered explosives, faithless looting. Actually, the Banishing Neck and Retraction Helix are probably bad. Rather leave in the EE. Yeah, let's do that. I don't mind these in the main deck, too, because, like, while they don't draw cards, they can, like, return problem permanence to, to their owner's hand, which is nice. You want a cup Botanical Sanctum? Maybe. I... I am 
hard pressed to believe that both Grove of the Burn Willows and Stomping Ground are necessary. No, your your Jeskai Ascendancies draw and discard cards too, Voyas. So like, I actually have a Verdant Eidolon in the JAC list on my website because I think it's very good. Yep. So the the lootings are good with the Eidolon, but the Eidolon is just like good in general in this archetype. Yeah, the, the Grove feels suspect. I think when I was playing this deck list last time, I ended up getting down to the mana base that I was playing because I think I think all of my lands make blue mana, actually. Yeah, there's there's one non-blue producing land in the mana base on my website. So there's there's 15 blue sources in my 16 lands in the, in the last build I played, whereas this build only has 13 blue sources in 18 lands. Because again, this archetype tends to keep a lot of one land cantrip hands. I always think that he's such a tough nut to crack. Like, this hand's, like, keepable, but it just doesn't do anything impressive, and it doesn't have Leyline of Sanctity in it, so I think I'm supposed to mulligan. This hand doesn't have Leyline, but it's very good, so I'm going to keep it. Yep. This might be a game where we cast for an island. What does this do? Sacrifice it, add three mana of one color. That's funny. All right, well, if I draw a uh, JAC next turn, we could potentially kill them. Unlikely, but possible. I'm going to decline blocking here. It looks free on my Sylvan carry added, but if they play any instant, the Goyf gets big enough to eat my carry added. Oh, you know what? I should probably mana morphos there, so that way if I draw a land, they have to take the idol on. Whenever I hear about people make arguments that like Umazawa's GTA and Punishing Fire are too good for modern, I agree that they're probably not too good on a power level perspective, but I feel like those people have lost sight of the fact that they've lost sight of the fact that you're supposed to be playing games for fun, and those games those cards create really miserable gameplay patterns. That's incredibly unfortunate. All right, moving right along. Onward, upward, backward, forward. For the record, that, that match that we just lost had nothing to do with the details about the mana base and things like that that I've been talking about in this deck. Jund, Jund's a hard matchup for this archetype. All of all of the fair discard based mid range decks are hard for this deck. You're gonna get picked apart in a lot of different axes, and Jund especially is difficult because they have a lot of ways to interact with Ascendancy once it's on the table as well. 
I, I agree, Al Bordergore. I think those cards are miserable and create miserable games of magic. The difference is those cards have always been in the format and people are people are are clinging to them for dear life. If I if I was allowed to do what I thought would be best for modern, I would gut the format. At least of all the cards that create really rancid games. Not necessarily all the combos, but all of the cards that just like are obnoxious. By, by my personal subjective measures of obnoxious, but I'm not in charge and modern's never gonna change. So if you want something less obnoxious, you should play other formats. Banning eighth edition probably wouldn't be a terrible start. Just get eighth and ninth out of there. Those are those are ugly white border sets anyways, just to get rid of them. Uh, Blood Moon, Ensnaring Bridge, Urza's Tower. It's going on full flame. Yeah, bridge is bridge is pretty annoying too. Uh, this matchup's not terrible for us. Find a we have a sentence in hand, so we just need a mana creature. Perfect. So uh we could actually turn three then with the draw of Sylvan Carry added here. Not guaranteed, but pretty likely. Fate Stitcher makes it pretty likely that we combo this turn. So this is this is why Summoner's Pact is sweet in this archetype. So Summoner's Pact is a free spell that lets us trigger Jeskai Ascendancy to untap our creature when we don't have another land tier. So I will cast Summoner's Pact here to get started, even though I don't have another land. So the combo works. We start start drawing and discarding cards. Fate Stitcher is a card we want in our bin anyways. I would like to draw this Verdant Idol on. I'm going to put this Fate Stitcher into play for my discard pile. I mean, to be fair, the only reason Mardu Pyromancer is a mid-range deck that has to play those obnoxious cards, because the rest of the format's so incredibly powerful, it's like playing those cards as Hail Mary type effects. But again, like, anybody expecting Modern to change at any fundamental level just, like, hasn't been paying attention to the format as a whole. Modern's not going to change. If you don't like Modern for what it is right now, which is me killing my opponent on turn three with Jeskai Ascendancy combo, I think you should just play a different format. And that's okay. Not every format has to appeal to every people, every person. All of the discard-based mid-range decks are bad matchups for this deck. Sometimes you can steal games, but they're on average rate really terrible for you. Verdant Eidolon's really going to punch the clock and go to work here. So when you're comboing with this deck, there's two what I would like to refer to as bottlenecks with it that you have to overcome on occasion. And one of those, one of those bottlenecks is having enough cards to keep looting through your deck with Jeskai Ascendancy. The other bottleneck is having enough mana. And because we hit Fate Stitcher right away, we're definitely going to have enough mana. And because we have Verdant Idol on going, we're almost certainly going to have enough cards. So normally when we talk about deck thinning, I always bring up that deck thinning is statistically irrelevant and insignificant, but that fails to be the case and becomes untrue when you are playing a deck like this where we get to see a significant portion of our deck during the game. So deck thinning becomes much more relevant when I know I'm going to be drawing most of my deck. So I probably shouldn't uh, auto yield. So we're pretty close to deterministic at this point. My opponent's going to die. It's going to be like two minutes of clicking, but my opponent is going to lose this game. I 
have to go and untap, pick this back up, untap my Dorcas. This, if this is making you nauseous, this probably isn't a league you want to stick around for. We're going to be here for a hot second. And this is, this is the part of the game where this deck's actually easier to play in paper in a lot of ways. You have to keep track of some things manually in paper that Magic Online does for you automatically. But in paper at this point, I could like flip my hand up and explain to my opponent which direction we're heading in and why we're heading there and be like, okay, you're going to lose this game. It's going to be like eight turns from now, but this is what I'm going to do approximately and you're going to die. So I could Glittering Wish and kill them right now with Flesh Blood. However, if I don't have to show them that that card's in my deck that I have access to it, I generally prefer not to. So I am going to go ahead and... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just get another Just Kai Ascendancy here and just kill them by attacking with the uh, with the Fate Stitcher. I guess I should technically keep looting. My favorite kills in this deck are the ones where you kill them with, uh, are the ones where you kill them with, uh, Birds of Paradise. Your bird just gets real swole. It's like, all right, let me beat you up. Yeah, this is Magic Arena. I just put it on low graphics mode. My, co my computer was struggling a little bit, so I decided to turn the graphics down. Hey, CBC Spartan, thanks for the three month resub. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me employed here. So I'm actually deterministic at this point. I actually could go infinite at this point with the banishing neck and the explosives, but these guys, these guys will untap. And we'll attack for lethal here. I'm not gonna overkill because I got things to do, places to go, decks to play. Was it good for you, opponent? It was good for me. The most important part about when you play a game like this in paper is that you extend your hand outward and tell your opponent good games and try and shake their hand. Nah, not really, Demunta, honestly. I, I spent so much time traveling for so long. It's honestly just very nice to be home. Yeah, that was a turn three kill on the play. Like, between, between 2014, 2015, and 2016, I spent upwards of 75, 75 plus weekends probably traveling between those three years. So like half half the weekends each year for three years traveling. seen more than my fair share of the insides of hotel rooms and you know six seven eight hour car rides with lots of people i'm hard pressed to mulligan hands that have turned one mana dorks in this deck even if the rest of this hand kind of sucks which is another one of the reasons why i really like noble hierarch and the archetype just like anytime you play a mana dork on one it's just like yeah let's go
Sometimes I really wonder what modern would look like if they completed some of these cycles. Like, could you imagine if we had every color combination of Horizon Canopy and every color combination of Grove of the Burn Willows? What uh what would what would the format look like? How would they change? All right, damping sphere is something we got to deal with here at some point. That being said, we can like kind of win through damping sphere some of the time. It's more difficult. You can you can win through Thalia pretty easily. Damping sphere is much harder. Yeah, could you imagine Burn getting to play four red white red white horizon canopy style dual lands? Oh, and just like everybody dealing damage to themselves, right? That's probably what you meant. So I can't play the Serum Visions because this makes green mana and they have Damping Sphere in play. Hopefully. Hopefully they don't sweep my board next turn. Although I guess if they were sweeping my board, they probably would have swept it last turn. Hopefully they kept kind of a mediocre hand in the back of Damping Sphere being there, being their saving grace. Uh, you can't cast Rex Sage this turn, friendo. Because Damping Sphere is symmetrical. Good job. Nice four mana creature. Just good clean deck building. I, I bet they I hope they have the untapped land in their hand too. Just like played the Valakut. Because now, now next turn, they can't do anything. Because next turn they have to pay for the Summoner's Pact. Got him. So I'm looking for a Glittering Wish at this point. Yep, yeah, so I got the silence is actually a time walk. So you bring in silence in a matchup like this to basically time walk your opponent. All right, that's a glittering wish. So that should be the game. I think I've cast two spells this turn. So if I cast this... This Abrupt Decay is going to cost 5 mana, but then I should hopefully have enough to finish comboing after that. I believe I believe we're killing them through Damping Sphere here, which is kind of hot. Oh, there's no Wear Tear in this sideboard either, is there? This has been this has been an excellent combo turn. Nice nice heat piece. And I, and I actually don't even have to do that much work here. Because, like, these are already 9 power, right? So I only have to get to, to 18 between the two of them. Yeah, put it back set up, pex it in. I always love getting to play a deck like this. Or, like, Grishel Brand or Narset Cannon against something like the Red Green Valakut deck. Because the Red Green Valakut deck just, like, dumpsters all the fair mid-range decks I like playing. So, like, getting to sit on the other side of the coin where you play, like, their bad matchup against them feels real, real satisfying. Yeah, like, the, the Valakut combo deck is, like, the overly redundant, consistent turn 4-5 combo. This is, like, the slightly volatile, less consistent turn 2-3-4 combo deck. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think I think Camping Sphere is actually very good in the Velika deck, for what it's worth. They're they're a combo deck that doesn't care about it being in play. Uh, there are no Noxious in this list. Uh, my latest list does not play Nox Survival either. You can find my preferred configuration of this archetype on my website. So, like I said, this list that I'm playing is a list that a group of people have been working on, but I've not played personally before. Some of the details in here seem sweet. Some of them I'm not sure on. The spell base seems reasonable. I'm not sure if I'm sold on the mana base changes they've done, though. Uh, Chalice in the sideboard of the Scape Shift decks is a throwback to when um, Infect was more popular because Infect was an incredibly difficult is an incredibly difficult matchup for the Valakut deck just because they're faster and Chalice of the Void on one is really good against Infect. Yeah, what's going on, Quarth? I was gonna be done the league before this one, but we had someone donate to. Uh, Justin and Anironics donated to uh, run a couple more, run a couple more back here, and uh, this just has to be breeding pool because I don't have uh, Hollowed Fountain in my deck to fetch. Otherwise, I definitely would have fetched Hollowed Fountain there. Yes, it is currently uh, twenty twenty after eleven where I live. It's also very possible I just didn't realize it was deterministic game one swimmy dude. Like, this isn't exactly a very common archetype, so I don't really fault people when they, like, don't get what's going on. Hey, don't spell pierce me, bro. And this is, this is a good example of, like, Faithless Looting being much worse than a normal cantrip for us here. On average, because, like, I don't actually have... This is going to put me down a card, right? Like, I get to draw two cards here, but, like, I have to keep the Serum Visions and ditch the Glittering Wish. Whereas, like, now I'm down to just exactly one card. I'm very, pretty unlikely to go off this turn. Whereas if I had one more card, I could, I'd be pretty likely to go off. It's always correct to loot. And then, like, we worked and didn't do anything, so... Hopefully they don't flip the thing in the ice next turn, because if they flip the thing in the ice next turn, I'm not going to have a Mana Dork in play, and then I'm likely to die. Alright, well that's good for me. They have a Cryptic Command here that would be bad for me. I guess the upside here, like, to give fairs fair for Faithless Looting, Faithless Looting might flash back this turn to be useful. This might be a little greedy. All right. Well, if they don't have a cryptic command, I guess I guess a lot of these, a lot of these decks don't necessarily have cryptic command in them. Woof. All right. Looting flashback, looking pretty good here with two two medium cards in my hand. Looking for cards that actually draw cards, though. Okay, abundant growth is a good pickup. Getting, getting to pick this idol on up is huge here because again I'm, I'm kind of stuck on so this game I'm kind of stuck on cards so the idol on generating some card advantage there for us is a big deal Get 
Get Maludon. Get Maludon. All right, Glittering. Glittering Wish. Glittering Wish should solve my potential not enough card problems here too that we could have because um, Glittering Wish gets us a Scar Scale Ritual and it picks the Verdant Eidolon back up. So we should be home free from here at this point. It's our storm count. I really wish I had some kind of computer program to tell me what the storm count was. That would be nice. So I'm choosing not to loot here because I don't have any cards in my hand that I actually want to discard. Right, don't mind me. Just doing my thing. It gets a lot easier on Magic Online when you know that three is the yes hotkey. Yeah, I should probably start diddling their lands, that's true. Good call. All right, they, they appear to be auto-passing. They appear, they appear to have nothing. So this is probably going to be another game where I don't need where I don't need to show them where I don't need to show them that I have uh, what's it called? Flesh blood in my sideboard. So they're at 17. So this adds 6 power to the board. Or sorry, this adds yeah, 6 power to the board. So this is lethal. So 17, 20. Oh, I do need to tap TT, don't I? That's fine. If I'd have messed that up there, I could have still killed them with flesh blood out of the sideboard. Good, good catch. Almost, almost missed that. It's late. It's late. It's been a while since we've done this. And my hand's cramping a little bit from doing all the hotkeys. My opponent actually just like F6 and AFK. Clicking, clicking intensifies. I knew all that, all that StarCraft 2 and Counter-Strike Source APM was going to come in handy one day in my future profession. Little, little did I know. My opponent, opponent literally just like fell asleep with their keyboard while we were doing our thing. Just like, uh, uh, uh. I'm actually surprised you're up this late. Don't I have work in the morning? No, I'm actually taking tomorrow off, Asim. I do have to be awake with the kids, but like that requires a little bit less consciousness than like being on to stream. So the daycare is closed on New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. So I'm taking off tomorrow and then Christy's taking off New Year's Day. It's actually a little bit awkward because like I talked about how I'm changing my schedule to be like nine to five Monday through Friday. And then like this Monday I have to take off because of New Year's Eve. And then next Thursday I have to take off because that's our closing day for the new house. It'll, it'll all work itself out eventually. Well, eventually at some point I will do five days in a row Monday through Friday. A 
original EverQuest to hold. Oh, gee. Yeah, it was funny. We were we were talking to the mortgage officer and they wanted to like validate that Twitch Twitch gives me paychecks. And they were like, we need someone to call at Twitch. And I was like, I don't know who you call on a phone at Twitch. So I had to like dig into all of my emails to like find my Twitch partner rep's phone number buried in the footer of one of them. It was just like, yeah. And then it was funny. It's like, I was like, I like messaged my Twitch rep. I like texted him and he's like, all right, I think, I think I got it all figured out, but they wanted a Twitch front desk number to call. And he goes, I don't know what, t what the Twitch front desk number is or if we even have a front desk. So, but the loan officer didn't call me again. So I'm assuming he got everything figured out that he needed. Yeah, I, I am considered self-employed, but apparently for mortgage applications, they message the companies that you claim to be getting 1099s from to like find out if they're actually giving you 1099s. Yeah, so so hopefully it all shakes itself. So if I if I don't have a if we don't have a new house at the beginning of the year, it's because the loan officer couldn't figure out how to figure out that I get money. Which would be annoying, but you know, kind of a funny story. Really, Bilbo? Yeah, apparently they said that standard operating procedure. I don't know. You can't just tell me you deal drugs, right? Well, it's like weird too, right? Because like my, my wife, my wife works a real nine to five. So I just like figured like whatever small amount of money. Cause like they're using my previous income stuff. So like my Twitch made like very little money. I was like barely employed in 2016 and 2017. Like my primary job in those years was being a stay at home dad. Tom, I just gave you three cents to call me, right? <laughs> I mean, Ninja easily makes seven figures a month. Yeah, like I couldn't, I couldn't believe if they were like, if they're taking an average of like my previous year's incomes, like this year, this is a real job for me, right? But like, if you're looking at my previous year's incomes, it's like very, very negligible amounts of money that I made. Lots of which was had expenses written off against it because like when I was traveling to play Magic, I really, you write off most of it because like you spend as much as you make to travel. I'm a close second to Ninja. Yeah, exactly. Exactly the case. Oh, you know what? I could have, I'm so silly. It's just so late that I just wasn't even thinking. I totally should have silenced them. The reason why I didn't silence them is because it's late and we were talking. But apparently my opponent's hand doesn't do anything, so we're gonna be okay here. Oh, I shouldn't have discarded my other silence, apparently. Happy New Year, see you Twitch. Thanks for the biddies, I appreciate it. I wonder if they have like a lightning bolt here. If they have a lightning bolt or in a braid, this could be annoying. You think they have a lightning bolt or in a braid, so my, my 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 mess up here could be bad. Although I guess I guess if they bolt this, I summoners packed in response. This is this is a sweet kill turn. Just like alright, hold 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 the phone. Let me cast my free spell. And then, like, I get to cast Manamorphose in response to this Abraid 2, and then this will be too big to kill with Abraid. Nice fair deck opponent. I 
All right, we should be with the uh, glittering wish and verdant eidolon. We should be pretty close to deterministic at this point. Yeah, super close to deterministic. He's got he's got three damage marked on him. What what of it? What of it? And like again, a lot of people on Magic Island like don't concede because like they don't know they don't understand that they're deterministically dead. Even if they know how this combo deck works, they can't know at this point that I've got them covered. In paper, you just like flip your hand face up and be like, yo, dog, this is how you die. But here, I don't think it's unrealistic to make me click it out. It is easier to just AFK. That is exactly correct. I mean, like, by the time I, like, take the time to, like, type out in chat, even if I had a chat, how this worked, like, I'd have been better off just, like, clicking through it. We're gonna get, we're gonna get deterministic real quick here. So as you can see, the counterspell matchups, um, while not accidentally, are they, are they conceding? They conceded, all right, they conceded. Um, the, so here's the thing though, it's not just about learning how this combo deck works. This combo deck, unlike a lot of decks like Storm and stuff, isn't deterministic. One of the reasons why I actually really like playing this combo deck is because every time you combo, it plays out a little bit differently and like, it's possible to start comboing and brick off with this deck. Yeah, it looks different every time, and at a different point, it becomes deterministic, depending on a lot of different factors. So, from an interesting to play standpoint, I really like it, but from a, you could tell your opponent they're dead standpoint, there isn't like a, okay, at this point, you're always dead, because it almost always looks different. Yeah, the, the Verdant Eidolon has been a very good addition. We added Summoner's Pact at one point on someone's suggestion, and then the JAC Discord dug deep into the bowels of the Gatherer and came up with Verdant Eidolon. It's been a good, good add. Oh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get greedy and keep this with a scry on the draw. Ding. They mulligan to five, so Bogles or Tron, or someone unlucky. Those are those are the three options when someone mulligans below, below below six in in, in modern. They're playing Bogles or playing Tron, or they're unlucky. Just unlucky. They've got spirit. Yes, they do. They've got spirit. How about you? Untapped land. All our lands are untapped. Not Dryad Arbor land. All right. Do I want Dryad Arbor here? I think I do actually just want Dryad Arbor. 
I guess maybe I should take the Misty, because the Misty could be Dryad Arbor if I wanted it to be anyways, but it's a fetch land otherwise. It's a shock land otherwise. Yeah, maybe I'm supposed to take the Misty there. If they like upkeep path my Dryad Arbor, I get sad here. Uh, this deck cannot win without JC. No, not really. That's why we play a bunch of cantrips and seven copies of JC. All right, let's try and hit the next land drop. Got a Morphos here trying to hit a land. Perfect. So, if I hit a land next turn, I get to, I could potentially combo. If they don't have disruption and I hit a land next turn, I can Glittering Wish, get JAC, cast JAC, Summoner's Pack, start comboing. Now, I only play, I only play limited on this channel for large amounts of money, $100 or more. We're a, we're a Constructed, we're a Bastion of Constructed. Lots of, lots of good streamers that make lots of limited content. I am not one of them. That's true. The last one is always Spokular. I guess the Dryad Arbor making mana of any color probably isn't that important with, uh, with Sylvan Carry added in play. The cards that we diversified, Swimmy Dude, take Meddling Mage off the table. You know what else is more annoying? Freeloading Twitch chat viewers who don't contribute anything to my channel who complain about my stream overlay. That's that's what's really annoying. It's, re it's really weird how it's never the people who pay me money that complain about the ad placement. It's always, it's always the freeloaders that are like, wah, wah. It's almost like, it's almost like the card text is so small anyways, you probably can't read it most of the time and you need to look it up to begin with. In fact, the card text is so tiny on digital Magic the Gathering games on average, they completely removed it from the cards on Magic Arena, and that's why. Frylock, thanks for the brand new Prime support. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Thanks for keeping me employed here. Correct, yeah. If it annoyed you, you probably wouldn't pay me. All right, if their last card isn't Company into Spell Queller, and if they had a Company, they probably would have cast it, right? No, that's not true. They might be holding it. Right, if their last card's not Interaction, they should die here. The last card's always Spell Queller, chat. Mother. Mother. Oh, magic. Apparently, they are not quite as unlucky as I thought. Hey, Deadpool with the sub gifty. I appreciate that. Thanks for, thanks for keeping me employed here. I appreciate the support. Could we somehow have played around that with Retraction Helix? No, I needed one more land to play around that with Retraction Helix. Also, the opponent had a 
uh, had a hexproof Lord in play because Spirits isn't a feel smart deck. Spirits is glorified Bogles. Spirits, Spirits is glorified Bogles. What do we think about Silence in this matchup? Maybe it's better than these. Maybe it's better than these. I don't actually know. I haven't I haven't played this deck since Spirits really picked up in popularity. If I had to venture a guess, I would estimate that Spirits is a tough matchup for this. I hate the ad banner that covers the card text of your hand because it reminds me that Modern is an auto Rita and it never will be. <laughs> uh. If there's one thing I realized, Hathor, that made not only me happier as a person, but also my content much better playing Magic, is that if you're playing Magic at any point and you're feeling unhappy while you're doing it, you need to reassess why you're really playing that game and, like, probably take yourself out of it. Like, even as someone who, like, has this playing this game be his job, like, playing games of Magic that aren't fun is, like, really miserable. Like, if I wanted to be miserable while I was working, I would go, you know... I don't know. I, I even like writing software. I don't know. I'd be doing something else, right? Have a good night, Magus. Thanks for dropping in. So the silences are actually very good against instant speed interaction. So the thing silence is there explicitly for counter spell based matchups because basically you just cast silence and they have to counter that and they usually can't hold up multiple counter spells. Are we two and one? We're two and two and one currently. We died to Jund and we are down a game currently against Bant Spirits. This hand's not amazing, but it's fine if we draw mana. It's actually really good if we draw mana dork. So we're hoping this abundant growth draws Birds of Paradise or Sylvan Carry added. And again, hands like this make me wonder like, is it really worth cutting the Noble Hierarchs? Because Noble Hierarch is basically one of our two combo pieces. Why I stopped playing non-EDH or non-limited paper magic. Life's too short to force Celestial Colonnade. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's not... I don't know if that's strictly true, Nudster. Like, as as adults in the world, right? There's plenty of things in the, in the world where... At plenty of times in life we're like, well, I'm not really having a good time here, but this is something that needs to get done. <sighs> I realized I realized I was truly an adult and not a child anymore when we were looking at houses and the house that we ended up putting an offer in on one of the things I'm excited about for it is that the the kitchen into the like the living room area or like one big open space so I'm going to be able to set the TV up in the living room so I can like watch TV easily while I stand at the sink and do the dishes. Just like, it's the little things that make you happy as an adult. It's the, it's the little things. Man, our hand is just going to be much too slow here. Yeah, no, no joke at, at my current, at the current house that we live in. So like the current house, the sink in the kitchen faces a window going outside and there's like a cabinet here and there's a cabinet here. I literally put a shelf between the two cabinets so I could like set my netbook or my tablet up there to like watch TV or a Twitch stream on while I do the dishes. So like not having to do that and just having a straight line of sight to the actual TV sounds like a, sounds like an A plus upgrade. <laughs> Birds of Paradise. 
Hey, uh, if I if I would have known all I had to do was ask really nice for it, I'd have done that a couple of turns ago. Now we just have to play through the six spell quellers they have in hand and we'll be good to go. Good to go. Our kids, so we don't actually use our dishwasher that often because our kids are small enough that most of their dishes are like plastic that isn't dishwasher safe, which is not ideal. I rounded up on the number of spell callers. Oh look, and their spell callers like don't even matter, right? Cause we're just like dead to their bogles draw. I guess I could technically, if they have nothing, I could draw a summoner's pact and kill them. All right, I'm gonna cast this just so y'all can see their spell queller. We're dead. There are always, always six spell quellers. Never, never not six spell quellers for the last cards in hand. Never, never don't have it. Yep. Yeah, so, so far, the the Faithless Lootings were okay. I'm kind of in for the Faithless Lootings, especially with the Verdant Eidolon. I don't think I like the mana base changes in this deck list compared to the list on my website. And we haven't had Banishing Knack and Retraction Helix come up, so I'm willing to give those a little bit would be willing to give those a little bit more time. But I do I do miss the Noble Hierarch, so I think the 18 lands no nobles, I'm not a fan of. I think I would go back to playing the mana base on my website or something close to it. Like maybe you need one more red source with the Faithless Lootings, but I would definitely get the Noble Hierarchs back into this archetype. Having having Noble Hierarchs gives you like your beep beep go fast draws and a little bit more consistently overall, just like you need a mana dork to go off. I think the list on my site only has two, I think the list on my site only has two Fate Stitchers in it too, which is probably plenty. There's only two Fate Stitchers list on my site. All right, this will be the last match with JAC here. And then we are playing one more league with Restore Balance before I wrap things up for the night. Notice after watching you play Grixis Shadow that you don't have a list up on your site. I, I actually just don't have enough experience with the archetype retina to like have like an educated or informed opinion on it. So like the lists on my site aren't just lists that I've played. There's lists for modern especially. They're lists that I've played enough to, to like say confidently this is the build that I like. And I definitely like don't have that for Grixis Shadow. My Grixis Shadow feedback is still mostly uh this deck felt good. We played it okay, but I don't know enough to tell you what's good or bad. All right, so. I think I'm gonna bottoms up here and just like dig deep. Like I have other cantrips in my hand and I have the land and the mana dork. So I'm just gonna bottoms up, hoping to hit the uh, JAC naturally. Spire of Industry, please be playing Lantern Control because that matchup is really good for us. You think I could take the last viewer submitted list and be fine? Um, there was some there was some talk about the creeping tar pit. I might I I think uh, if you listen to the feedback from that video, Retina, I think that list is pretty close. It would probably I would cut the K commands for a braids that are in the sideboard, and then well, what else do I do? I would probably cut the creeping tar pit and one other spell for like two more cantrips in the main, like play two serum visions. 
All right, looks like they're playing KCI. So ideally we wanna kill them next turn before they kill this turn before they kill us next turn. Just good, good, clean, modern the gathering as I like to call it. Let's, let's kill them on our turn three before they kill us on their turn three. So the Verdant Eidolon should make sure I don't bottleneck on cards here. And then the Mana Morphos and the Fate Stitcher especially should guarantee that we don't bottleneck on... Uh, on mana. Yeah. Yeah, a braid, a braid is just really important for being able to keep up against, like, spirits and, ban hu and humans in terms of, like, having enough removal spells. Uh, someone asked what KCI is. KCI stands for Crocklon Ironworks. Is a, is a combo deck that regularly kills in the third to fourth turn of the game. Not dissimilar to what we're doing. Probably a little bit more consistent. It's more popular than this deck for sure for a reason. I mean, that's just like modern in a nutshell, right? You like you like show up, you like make a conscious decision to try and dodge a specific matchup. And then just like mono run into that matchup. It's like, well, this is just how it goes, how it goes again. Here we go again. Should have known, should have known, should have known again. Beauty do 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 Yeah, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if this is just like, if JAC is one of those fringe decks in modern where just like not enough people have played it yet. So we actually haven't had the infinite combo yet tonight, but this is uh, this is actually an infinite loop, which you can explain to people. So we play. So now, now I can start declining to draw because I this is deterministic on its own. And then I retraction helix on my Sylvan carry added. And then I tap the Sylvan carry added to pick up the engineered explosion. Like, so like, here's the thing why I haven't been super sold on these retraction helixes in the past is sure, this, this gives us an infinite loop here that's deterministic, but like we were statistically very, very likely to win this game even without this loop. So it's like, well, is this retraction helix card worth playing for this corner case infinite scenario when I was really likely to win this game anyways? Like. What percentage of the games is this infinite loop winning me that I wasn't already guaranteed to win is basically the question you have to answer. And my gut and my experience from playing this archetype a good deal feels like that the answer to that question is not many, but I don't know that for certain. So we bring in silence in a matchup like this because we can time walk them. So like, if we think they're gonna go off in a turn, like they cast KCI, we can respond to their KCI by casting silence and then we can untap and kill them. So silence just says, you know, you're done doing stuff this turn, come back to me, okay, I'll kill you on my turn. Yeah, Helix is fine against sideboard cards like that, but like, we already have cards in our sideboard that are good against things like that. Like we have Abrupt Decay and other builds of this deck play things like um, Wear Tear in the sideboard or Assassin's Trophy. So like permanent based hate cards aren't really a problem for you. So again, I'm gonna be digging deep, looking for a JAC here. Although I have I have two slow JACs in my hand. I always refer to Glittering Wish as slow JAC because it's an ascendancy that costs five mana, which might be too slow in this matchup. Like they're a turn four combo deck. So like we're not killing till our turn four with this hand most likely, which means that we're gonna be a little slow. Although they don't have any ramp spells yet, but they could go like zero into into Mox, into KCI kill us next turn. So we, we could die in their turn three here. And like, I'm not killing them till their turn four. Hopefully, 
Hopefully, no, I'm definitely not killing before turn four. Can work well against against Thalia. Well, this deck combos through Thalia a lot of the time. You you also combo. So again, like you are talking about car cards that like we already beat. So like Flesh Blood beats in Snaring Bridge. Blood Moon. Our deck has Mana Morphos, eight creatures that make mana of any color, and Abundant Growths in it. Blood Moon is a joke. You beat you beat Blood Moon very easily. So again, like, I feel like I, I've played this archetype a lot. Like, there are a lot of leagues with this on my YouTube channel. And all of the things that people tell me that these cards beat, I go, well, you already have tools to beat those cards. So, like, it feels like it's just like this crutch. All right. Am I dead? I gave them, I gave them a turn four. Am I dead? Is there is there no merit to combinations of possible? So remember what you what you have to remember is you don't just draw these cards that make your infinite combo work when you have the infinite combo. You also draw these cards when they're clunky and awkward and not infinite comboing for you. So you have to outweigh. Okay, how often does this card win me the game versus how often do I draw it and it just does stone nothing. That's, that's the question you have to answer. How often is it saving me versus how often is it just beating me? Should show how they try to combo? Maybe. If they play like a, like a, a the, the card that returns the scrap trawler and a couple other things, I'll probably concede. But actually, it looks like they're bricking here, potentially. I like that idea, though. These people are great by their stuff. These people, also great. Buy their stuff. Back to Masturbatory KCI. Wow! Wow! I can't believe they just passed us. Silly, silly opponent giving me a turn four in modern. Remember when we talked about how their deck was less likely to brick off a half second ago? Lol. Lol. How old am I? I will be 28 in seven days. Oh, they've got a they've got a nature they got a back to nature. Okay. Um Wow, did I mess up? I totally messed up. I could have uh, Cerulean Wisped. I could have Cerulean Wisped in response here. Yeah, I could have Cerulean Wisped in response here. Awkward. That That doesn't do it, right? That doesn't that doesn't do it. No, it's the thirty first here. My birthday's the seventh. Yeah, I needed I needed one more mana. So it's actually worth noting here that if I would have led on if I would have led on the Cerulean Wisp as opposed to the Summoner's Pact, I would have been able to keep comboing here and probably kill them. All right, am I dead? I could have I could have played the gemstone mine weens. I had a land drop, but I already had the gemstone mine in my hand. Uh, 
All right, we should we should be done at this point. I'm going to concede. So I could have sequenced around them destroying my JAC there. And I didn't, so I died. I mean, nature's claim are just like, it, while specifically back to nature probably wouldn't have been on my radar, a, hey, they're going to play a card that destroys my enchantment definitely should have been on my radar. How bad is Rip against this deck? I mean, it has text. This deck can combo without its graveyard, but like, you do you do disrupt at a non-zero amount by bringing in Rip. People who have Rip always bring it in. Yeah, usually, usually they play a bunch of copies of Nature's Claim. Back, back Nature is not a super common card out of KCI, but Nature's Claim is. So, like, some, some instant speed way to destroy enchantments is, like, pretty common. I just got kind of sloppy and didn't think about it. I would love to play first. Yep, a has got a Mana Dork and a Silence in it, so let's keep... Now nah, they'll, they'll kill us with something else, Nerdster. And like the the life EV of like waiting to find out what their something else is isn't worth it. Also, like when they combo, they draw their whole deck. And so if they're drawing their whole deck, they're gonna find their back to nature. Uh, this is match five, right? Yeah, we're two and two. This is match five. We actually have not played a game three. Yeah, we're two, we're two and two and have not played a game three. Welcome to modern. Enjoy your stay. No hollowed fountain in this list has really sucked. I am not I'm not a fan of the mana base that this deck is playing. Looking for Looking for a JAC at this point. I think the Faithless Lootings are worth testing. I don't like the mana base changes. I don't like cutting Noble Hierarchs. I don't think I'm a fan of shoehorning the infinite combo in. It's my, my feedback so far. The sideboard change I could kind of take or leave as well. So, I think the important here, Phantom of Hoaglandia. Thank you very much for the 11 month resub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. I think it's important. Yeah, the Eidolon's good. The Eidolon's in the deck list on my website. Did I just click the wrong colors of mana? I just clicked the wrong colors of mana. All right, so now that I clicked the wrong colors of mana, so that should have been blue red. I do I do at least have the silence. Oh, I can cast the silence, right? If they have a way to destroy this, we could be in trouble. And by in trouble, I mean, you know, whatever. All right. So do you do you have a thing? Yep. Uh, All right, am I dead? I gave you I gave you a, I graciously gave you a turn three. 
Should we lead on the silence? If I lead on the silence, I don't have a way to start comboing Al Gorderbor. Am I dead yet? Maybe. All right. Well, I got I got some birds. They flipped they flipped me the bird, chat. I have been I have been flipped the bird. Thank thank goodness Mox Opal is still legal. Thank God. God bless Mox Opal. I don't know. I don't know where modern would be if Mox Opal wasn't still legal. I just like box Ebro. <laughs> I could I could self publish Jack. I mean, <laughs> okay, okay. I wasn't dead last turn. Am I dead? Am I dead this turn? Yeah, it's very possible they've overboarded. They haven't hit a scrap trawler yet. I'm like, I assume by not snapping this off, they still haven't hit scrap trawler. I mean, like, they've had a lot of interaction, right? Like, they had Nature's Claim and Swan Song. Does Inventor's Fair get them a thing this turn? So this is three, six mana, seven, eight. So they can play a... Right, this is three, six... Seven, eight. Yeah, they, they have one, two, three, four artifacts, right? So they make one. They, they, mu they must have another piece of interaction here, right? This, this makes three being sacked, and then this is a fourth, so they can activate this while I still have Dark Steel Citadel, double Crocklon in play. I'm gonna fetch shock here real quick too. Oh, there isn't a shock land left in my deck. Good. Ugh. 
That's really funny. <laughs> oh. I my, my opponent beat us to conceding. My opponent beat us to conceding because we, we were dead. <laughs> oh, all right, so I, I really wasn't a fan of the changes this deck made compared to the list that's on my website. Um, I think it's probably worth testing, testing Faithless Looting in the list on my site because it's really good with Verdant Eidolon, and I've not tried those two cards yet, and that was like, okay here. I've now earned the horse I was given last month. Thank you, Bobby. I appreciate it. Isn't it past your bedtime? It's like 1.15 on the East Coast, or on the right coast, right? So, yeah. I think I think my takeaway is I might try some Faithless Lootings and list on my site, but I really wasn't a fan of the details in this list. The mana base does not have enough blue sources in it. I think cutting Noble Hierarchs is pretty wrong. Just like you want more mana dorks to like beep beep go fast. I think the infinite combo is kind of clunky and awkward. All right, I've been I've been I've been paid a large.